Zazz Hot. Oh, yeah. Bitsy. And Whipper. Welcome to the podcast, guys. A really, 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 really big podcast. I'm excited about this. A segment we call a What 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 Are the Chances? Um, stories of chance and coincidence. Like, hang on a minute, I'm on the other side of the world. How did you end up here with the same name and born on the same day as me? It's really, really weird how these stories uh, happen and the world works in mysterious ways. Quote, Bono, you too. Um, enjoy the podcast. The, the, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. What, what, what are the chances? These stories of chance and coincidence blow me away every time I hear them. And we wanted to get this man on this morning because if you have a look at this photo here, Fitz, you will be absolutely stopped in your tracks. So are they ident- identical twins? No, they're not. That is a doppelganger. Just a what? chance of meeting somebody that looks exactly the same as you. And not only are they identical, they have the same glasses. They've got a similar they've, hat on. They've got the same smile. This is weird. And the main man joins us on the line right now. Sean, hello, buddy. Hey, how are you? Sean, thanks for joining us. Where are you coming to us live from this morning? From Ohio. Ohio. So where did you meet your doppelganger, Sean? Uh, it was in Las Vegas. I was uh, there for my fo- uh, friend's 40th birthday party. Yeah. yeah. We were at the Flamingo Hotel, and they have, like, you know, they have, like, a pools there, and they have, like, cabanas on this side, yes. cabanas on that side, and a pool in the middle. <laughs> and I was just, like, kind of swimming between the two, and... The, the, the people I didn't know on this side, you know, the people at this cabana, they're looking at me and pointing and laughing. <laughs> yeah, I got really self-conscious. Oh, my God, is my old fella falling out of my togs? <laughs> yeah, I, I was making sure my bathing suit was okay, you know? <laughs> I, I looked over and checked out my friends because I needed a little, you know, self-confidence. Yeah. And they're pointing at some other dude and laughing. And I look over, and it's directly in front of me is this guy that looked just like me. It's like looking in the mirror. Where's, where's the guy from? Is he American as well? I, I I assume so. He had no accent. He had, like, Midwest accent, you know? <laughs> so you got a photo, uh, but you didn't really talk about it. Did you find it embarrassing, Sean? I, I did, but um, I think he found it more embarrassing than me because, man, he swam away really fast. <laughs> oh, did he? <laughs> See, maybe yeah, I just swam over to him and I was like, "Hey, are you Seth Rogen?" And he's like, <laughs> "No." <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, well, me either." <laughs> you do look like that. Would be instead of the conversation. <laughs> and that was it for the conversation. You didn't exchange numbers, become friends online, or anything. No, I could just tell he was very awkward, and his friends were laughing at him and me, and my friends were laughing at him and me. And that is... I kind of, you know, skedaddled back. See, over well, to what them. he's what he's done there is he's missed the opportunity to have a, a double. Totally. You know? If there's something yeah. that you, he doesn't want to do. He could have sent you in and vice yeah. versa. You could have worked as a team here, Sean. That's what I thought. I thought about that afterwards. You know, I was kind of trying to, you know, see how he was feeling well, about the situation. Well, that's right. Well, the $50,000 you you, um, you lost on the poker machines at Las Vegas, you could have sent him <laughs> home to your wife, Sean. Oh, and oh, said, yeah. <laughs> you need to explain this yeah. to her. I don't know. Maybe it was something like, you know, when you finally see yourself in the mirror, you yes. run away screaming. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that that is crazy. All right, doppelgangers. We're looking for doppelgangers. I love yeah. that. Sean, an amazing story, mate. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Good on you, Shawnee. Thanks, Best Sean. caller wins a uh, bottle of double gin gin, guys. We've got a new stock. God, the trolley rolled in yesterday. How many boxes and bottles have we got, Tommy? The stuff is flowing out of this building. It's great. Oh, it's just Tell the, the staff to well, keep Tom. their mitts off the yeah, double gin you gin. S- selling it to the sales crew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no we said profit. we wouldn't talk Thanks about that. to the Australian Distilling Co. guys. Yeah, if you've got a, a what, 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 what are the chances story this morning, we would love to hear it. Get involved, 13, 24, 10. Natalie and Camden, welcome to the show. What is your story this morning? Oh, good morning. Um, mine isn't actually a lookalike doppelganger, but it's a name doppelganger. Yeah, what happened? So I was pregnant with my son and I went to the scans and, you know, and then went for the results and they were like, what's your name? And I said, Natalie... W, I'll just say the mm-hmm. surname. And then he was, they were like, oh, didn't we do your results last week? And I was like, what? No. Um, and then um, they were like, oh, hang on, what's your birthday? So I told them my birthday, and they're like, oh, hang on, we've got another Natalie W here. Ah. Um, okay, this is, uh, yep, yeah, okay, here's your results. And I was like, oh, thanks very much. Wow. And then uh, probably a couple of months later, I had to book in for the hospital. And the hospital's not even in my area. Like, it's a, a private hospital a- outside my area. Mm-hmm. And when I rang up them, they were like, what's your name, Natalie W? And they were like, oh, hang on. We've already got a booking for a Natalie W at the same time. <laughs> oh, and I was so like, 
uh, okay. And they're like, check birthday, blah, blah, blah. And then they were like, I said, and then I made the joke of, oh, well, you better give me the right baby. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> then, yeah, yeah. You joke about it until you're on 60 Minutes. Oh, right. Exactly, I know. Um, and then apparently when I actually did have the baby, she had had the, the other Natalie W. had had her baby, but she'd had twins. Oh, oh my God. Oh, what <laughs> have, have you met, then? have you now met the other Natalie W.? No, but this is like now seven years later, and suddenly I'm getting all these weird emails at work, you know, like, and I'm a teacher saying, you know, um, your roles have been marked wrong or, you know, there's an assembly in this oh, squad. And I'm like, that's not even my school. Oh. And I'm like, this is really So weird. she's anyway, a teacher like, as well? She's following you. Yes, and in the same system. So our emails are only separated by a 01 or a wow. 02 at the wow. end. Wow. Is- she, she's, she's trying to take over your life. Let's go to Mark. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared. Oh, that's no. awesome, Nat. Let's go to Mark in Macquarie Park. What's What are the chances? What's your story, Mark? Yeah, good morning. Um, I ended up uh, growing up as an expat brat, and um, one of my best friends at the school in Singapore yes. left the school, and his family moved over to some other diplomatic uh, region of the world. Mm-hmm. I came back to Australia. 20-plus years later, we're both standing at the side of a football field, uh-huh. And they said to that group of parents, we need a coach and a manager. This bloke, I couldn't recognise, put his hand up and said, I'll go coach. And I said, I'll go manager. Uh-huh. The next week, we get the list of names. And I thought, did you go to school in Singapore? He said, yes, I did. So oh. we rekindled our relationship after 22 years, 23 oh, years. Amazing, Mark. Oh, Mark, thank you for sharing that story on the broadcast. Oh, that is... Extraordinary. Extraordinary. To get back there, mm-hmm. didn't recognise him. Nope. Grew up and still didn't recognise him. Now they're side by side and best mates again. Luke in Artarman, what are the chances? Good morning, guys. Um, I woke up one night with a bit of a pain in the lower abdomen um, and sort of went through the night, um, went to the hospital and mm-hmm. and confirmed it was um, appendicitis. So they put me in hospital, sort of, um, and I was in there for a, a day or two and... Um, then um, my boss sort of called, was looking for us, so we called in and said, hey, look, um, I'm in the hospital at the moment. I've got appendicitis, so I'm just about to go into surgery to get my appendix removed. Yeah. Um, and, he, and he let me know that one of the other guys in our office, who's a good friend of mine, also was getting his appendix out at the same time. So we ended up in the same hospital, in the same hospital room at the hospital with both his uh, post uh post-appendix surgery scars. That's it's weird. Nice. At the same time, I mean, yeah. Yeah. a majority of people don't get appendicitis their no, whole they don't. lives. Mm. That's extraordinary. So for it to happen at the same time... Imagine if two people in this team, like, what do you get, Tommy? Hemorrhoids. A hernia. Oh, hernia, no, sorry. Different. A do not hernia, get that's right. Hemorrhoids. Imagine if both of us got a hernia or two of us got something. That would require no. you lifting something. Well, that would I mean, probably... I've been carrying Fitzy for a long time. Oh, that 11 long. years on the show. Oh, classic <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Michelle and Kernel, what, is the, what are the chances? What do you got for us? Oh, hi. How are you going? Good, Michelle. Really good. That's what are the chances? Good. Um, so about 18 months ago, a couple moved into our street. I thought, oh, they were about our age. We'll invite them for a drink. So we got chatting, and it turns out that she was born on the same day, month, year hospital, and we spoke to our mums and it was the same time and everything. Oh my god, That is phenomenal. So, so, so you're the same age, same birthday, same hospital on the same day, Michelle? And pretty much the same time. So wow. it was like around 5, 6 o'clock at night we were both bored. That's cool. Isn't that it's extraordinary? At the same time. I mean, do you know what? We, we freak out when we see... We, we saw mm. um, a dog from the same kennel as Beastie and I was freaking out. <laughs> do you want to call oh the... Oh, my God! He's from the <laughs> same kennel! <laughs> Do you, want, do you want to call the show and win a bottle of gin? <laughs> that, that is crazy. phenomenal, Michelle. Thank you for your call. Tommy, do we do everybody gets a bottle or what do we do here? No, Sarah, no, I think normally I'm not Sarah choosing. There was a problem this morning at 6 o'clock that we don't need to talk about, so why don't you two choose? Oh, oh God, right. appendix is interesting. Well, I think... The same I, woman, same I, hospital. I think Michelle, like, finding... The same person who was in the same hospital on the same day. And then moving down the I street. Mean, what are the odds of that? That's got to be the highest odds of all. You'd have to say Michelle, so, Michelle. you've got the gin, son. There you go. Woo! Sorry, love. <laughs> I was about to say love. Well done. That's all yours. Thanks to Australian Distilling Co. 
How good is exploring our amazing backyard again? And ticking off all the big Aussie things, pineapples, bananas, melons. Oh, hearing you say that makes me hungry. Head to whatif.com and start planning your big Aussie adventure. What if? It's Aussie for travel. We spoke about this not long ago, right? Okay, so this is an interesting one. Mark Cuban is a billionaire and he's on the American version of Shark Tank. Okay. Remember we spoke about this? Yep. Now, don't get me wrong. The guy is very successful and he's done really, really well. But do you know what? People, you know, the everyday punter loves to hear the losses every now and then. And they don't, you know, when you're a billionaire, it's all about ego. Mm. You're telling everyone how well you're doing with the things that you do really well. No, no one's talking about the losses. Exactly right. And we didn't know this about Shark Tank. Tank, but you would think that the sharks on Shark Tank would have made a lot of money from that with some of the ideas that you see on the show. Mm -hmm. In a podcast, he said, no, that hasn't happened at all. There was this company that, but you would blow into it and it did alcohol detection. And it was a great idea. Yeah. And actually a decent product. But like the guy, I look at his Instagram and he'd be in Bora Bora. And I look at his oh, Instagram. What? Two weeks later, he'd be in Vegas partying, you know. Then he'd be on Nectar Island with Richard Branson. And I, I text him like, "What are you doing? You're supposed to be working." Oh no, I'm networking. Next thing you know, all the money's gone. So he he revealed that he'd lost millions of dollars in investments on the shark, uh, being a shark on mm -hmm. Shark Tank. None of them came off. And he hasn't won at all. And everyone's going, oh, that's really bad. Someone's just recently pointed out, this is on the American Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. This is back in 2013. There was a product called Doorbot. And this was the guy's pitch to the shark. Introducing the Doorbot, the first ever video doorbell built for the smartphone. The sharks went out one by one. It's really not an internet play. It's a consumer device. I just don't think it's for me. This company, instead of being worth $7 million, can be worth... 80 million, 90 million. I just don't see the progression. And for that reason, I'm out. No deal. Mark Cuban was one of those. No deal. Doorbot later rebranded as Ring. Oh, Ring. Amazon bought it for $1 billion in 2018. I was going to say, I've got two of their cameras at home. Wow. How good is that? Ring is awesome. So they, they he had opportunities. You're going to miss some. You're going to nail others. <laughs> You know, here he was complaining about all the startups that had failed that he'd put money into, all the early stage, and unfortunately he just missed. Well, the other one that we've spoken about was the guy that came up with Tough Mudder. Remember that? He was on the British Shark Tank. That's right. And he went in and said, hey, I've got this idea of sort of this 20K course. It's got obstacles. and It's you really it, hard. It's really hard. You do it as a team. There's electrical wires hanging down at the end, and everyone gets together and goes, oh, and you go through the mud. And they went, oh, my God, oh, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You're an idiot. Get out. Anyway, it's now in 20 countries across the yeah. world, and it's the biggest team-building exercise you can do. Yeah. Amazing. It's great. I just love a hit to the ego, though, mm. for those billionaires. Did they mention anything about the MUP? No, oh, no. Did they the mention the coffee not, cup with the mint? No, not mentioned at all, oh, mate. Oh, MUP Oh, MUP day. Thank you. Oh, oh, MUP, MUP date <laughs> is there is no MUP day. <laughs> The Fitzy and Whipper Podcast. G'day, guys. Uh, on a lighter note, um, a bloke by the name of Joe Chapman has just won the World Petrol Pumping Competition. I've never heard of this one. I mean, we focused on a couple of ridiculous championships uh, around the world um, on this show. Yesterday, I mean, we were sitting here on the TV on Channel 7. There was a pie competition, which I would like to enter. Yeah. I think I'd be better at ice cream. I mean, I've attempted dumplings in here when I took on that guy, Joe, I think his name was. He had over 100 dumplings here in the studio. He's a treat. Extraordinary effort. Uh, I think he ate the nine... No, it can't have been nine kilo. How big was that hamburger he ate, which ended up in the paper? Crazy. Could have been 29 kilos. Who knows? So, Petrol, I, I mean, can I just say to everyone mm. as well, because we, I've got the, the, highlight, the, the hybrid. hybrid now, the Mitsubishi hybrid, so I... I haven't filled up my car for ages, and it's actually an awesome yeah, be, feeling. It, you don't have it to would go be to good. the petty stuff. Like, filling up the petrol, filling up your petrol tank is just so boring. It, it's, and it's annoying. It's really mm. annoying. And it feels like this is such an archaic way of doing things. It's like making your bed. You go, hasn't this changed? Like, is this still the same as they were doing? 70, 80, 90, 100 years ago. Do you look around the petrol station at what other people are doing or what do yeah, you, what do, you bit, do? a little bit. Probably look at the price going up and up and up and I sort of aim for 100 litres and then I see it tick over $200 and I, my heart starts to race a bit. In America, and remember they did a little bit here but they would have advertising next to the Bowsers and yeah, you, would watch the tele you would watch television? They mm. did do them here. It was a smart idea, I thought, but that never really took off. <laughs> we filmed something once. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and it was like... 
it, the, the, for the whole ad, so it was like a small screen on the petrol pump, right? And so it was meant to get your attention. So I think it was you and I, Fitz, going, Hey. Hey, we're in here. It's, it's Fitz a- and Whipper hiding in the tank. Are you sure that's diesel? This is unleaded. Yeah, did you know you can get two chockies for a dollar inside? Funny, yeah. All right. I think we got paid for no, that. No, it was a promotion of our show. Was we it? We were promoting the Fitzy and Whipper show. But there's a few, hey. a few people were <laughs> lighting up darts and trying to blow their cars up after watching it. I've never seen so many scra- s- smashed screens in my life. Um, this guy yesterday who took out the championship for the petrol pumping competition, um, there was a couple of different categories. I mean, they had cars lined up and you had to see how many cars you could fill in a certain time limit. Uh, what I do like about this as well, he says he's ecstatic to have won it. He won $800. Um, you had to show also how to open the petrol flap. So, you know how it can be different on many cars, and you see people in a high car and they just don't know how to get the damn yes. thing open, then they realise you just have to push it and it'll open. Um, you had to do that as the cars rolled through. Another one they did, which would have been a real challenge and dangerous to the duco of the car, was the blindfold petrol pump. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so you're just sort of stabbing at the side of the car, oh. hoping to find a hole. Wow. Um, He managed to complete that and he's had a big win. Um, The other one that's been floating around recently was the Lie Down Championship. Remember that one? So that's where they take somebody to a busy area and it's the best sleeper. So you have to try and fall asleep no matter where. And you don't know where they're going to take you. So it might be they're down to the last three competitors. You're at Bondi Junction. You're in a fast, busy area. And you have to sleep. Done. So you're timed with how long it takes you to get to sleep, and then you need to remain asleep for that 20-minute period. You yeah. reckon you could do that, sis? In a heartbeat. Well, I think I just won. Huh? <laughs> I just halfway through that break. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that is not right. No, see, I could go to sleep. I feel like I could go to sleep straight away right totally. now, yep. but I don't think I could, sir. Oh, I don't know. If we lay down on the floor right now, I'm willing to go at it with you. Let's see who okay. can great sleep radio. First. be really yep. good radio. <laughs> um, we could go for that. I mean, when you get home, the toughest part about this job, I reckon, is probably around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's oh, brutal. Which translate to anybody that's sort of getting home, I suppose, around 6.30, 7 at night, yeah. if that's your job. How many espressos were you knocking off a day? I'm doing five during the show. Oh, that explains gosh. Monday. But that explains Monday, says, and I've now you pulled were, back. Oh, you were flying. Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I know. I did not know what was going on. <laughs> and then you awesome. were, I, I will say, and mm. then you got that anti-inflammatory powder that you got off Wayne Carey, which I thought was a bit <laughs> Well, I was sitting next to him at the casino, and I said, my hip's really hurting, and he said, have a crack at this. Next thing you know, we were booted out. Gosh. I couldn't believe it. The pain was gone. I couldn't believe it. couldn't feel anything. <laughs> the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Lords of Property, it's one of my favourite Instagram accounts of all time. You know, I've spoken about it quite a long time. And, and you know what? These guys, people say that they're in the industry of selling houses. Well, they are not in the industry of selling houses. People say to me, oh, what do you do? And I say to them, I'm in the business of creating wealth and happiness. Okay. <laughs> Nothing from Double Bay um, Warren here? No, no, Warren's no, not in there. No Double Bay Warren? No, Gavin Rubenstein, he's not in here either. Um, you know what I love? I love an enthusiastic auctioneer, someone who really loves their job. Third, final call, all done, silent finish. We are selling, we are selling, we are sold, 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 sold. You'd turn up just to watch a show. He sounds like that race caller that's losing his voice. Oh, I love a real estate agent mm-hmm. that, that, that thinks outside the square. I mean, you know what? If there's a wonder wall in front of them, they're going to run right through it. <laughs> Today is going to be the day that I'm going to show this home to you. Oh, oh. no. By now, oh. you should have somehow realised that it's right for you. Ew. And I don't believe that any home can make you feel the way you do about it now. <laughs> Okay, that's an Aussie too. For anyone out there, though, the guru, right? And this is what I love about this guy. His name's Fraser Lack. He's down in Victoria. He's in Melbourne. And you know what? At the start, people thought this guy's a bit of a tool. He's not. He's not at all. And you know what? He's actually used 
he's used the reputation that he's got on Lords of Property now. Yeah. Right? And now he's actually doing corporate gigs and people are using him for motivational wow. tours. Wow. He went to a music festival and spoke. <laughs> he's actually getting... He's getting popular. Okay. And he's doing really, really well. So Fraser just puts up... Now, this is... You've got to be on the ball with this because he is throwing stuff at you here left, right and centre. Okay. And he gives you a message on your way to work or on your way home from work and he's just firing things off. So you have to be really careful and you have to listen hard, Sarah. Have a listen to phrases. Hey, friends, I know that I've been quiet, but I'm back. It's almost the fourth quarter. Forget where you've been and focus on where you're headed. I'm back to check in to keep you accountable and make sure you're on track. Define what's important and go all in. When the goal is clear, there are zero distractions. You need to move different if you want different. Old keys won't open new doors. Reset and review. Understanding that whatever you're not changing, you're choosing. Your goals should scare you. They really should. Don't listen to the background noise and be brave. It's always been you versus what you're capable of. Excuses make today easy, but tomorrow hard. Discipline makes today hard, but tomorrow easy. Make your choice. Remember that you ask for growth, so don't be surprised when life challenges the out of you. If you're only just interested, you'll do what's convenient. But if you're committed, you'll do whatever it takes. Dream big. What are you chasing? I'm in your corner. Let's go. Oh, and I've got something exciting coming out tomorrow. Watch this space. Be well. So he's... Oh, he's isn't he amazing? He, well, he's downloaded quotes from motivational posters. Hasn't he? I do, and he doesn't take a breath. Yeah. He just keeps going. He's like he's, he's, he's got I, a poster on his wall with dolphins <laughs> gliding through smooth water and down the bottom it says something like tomorrow will be the best day How ever. How many cliches can oh, you get into one God. chat? Oh, my God. Oh, he's a shocker. Is he converting? Is he selling houses? No, no, he's actually becoming really popular. Okay. People are loving him. Okay. Bye, bye, bye. Lords Shoot for property. the sky. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Shout out to a bloke called Dave. Congratulations, Dave. He had a birthday the other day, and Dave got a beautiful gift from his wife. He got the new Apple iWatch. If you don't mind, very generous gift. He'd wanted one for a long time. His wife finally said, here you go, Dave. Happy birthday, you wild colonial beast. He put it on. This was interesting. He then found out, because it's able to read his heart rate, that it, his heart had stopped more than 100 times in the in the next 48 hours. Wow. When he was sleeping? Yep. Or just when he was walking just down the road? Any, day, any minute of any day in the next 48 hours, 100 times. He just assumed the thing was playing up. And then his wife said, why don't you just go and have, go to the doctor? Just go and have a look. Go and talk to the doctor, and the doctor might need to um, have a bit of a look at you. The doctor said, yeah. The watch works. Don't fault the watch. It's your heart that doesn't work. Uh, Did an MRR scan. Missed five calls from the doctor saying you could have a heart attack any minute. You could have a sudden cardiac death any second. Do not move. An ambulance is on the way to where you are. Get yourself to the hospital. They got in there and realised that he had some sort of uh, issue called a block, a heart block, where the electrical current doesn't make it all the way through. Uh, his wife has now come out and said, I suppose I can have anything from now on in. I've saved your life. Saved your life. Oh, saved your life. With an Apple Watch. Well, that's like the guy who was cleaning his gutters on his roof and fell off his roof. No one heard him. Knocked himself out on the ground. He was gone. And the only thing that saved him was his Apple Watch because his heart rate sort of dropped dramatically when he was knocked out. And they, I, I think there's an, uh, there's a feature in it that calls, yes. it calls the ambulance. That's right, because they even know. Because we remember we had a meeting at the Apple headquarters and they said, we even know if somebody is to stage a, a, a stumble or a fall or if you attempted to act out falling down. It was actually, yeah, it was a dramatic drop. Yes, the Apple iWatch can tell the difference between a true fall where you lose consciousness and somebody just stumbling backwards. What and about then, if you just took it off, though? Then your heart rate goes. Well, your heart rate's gone, yeah. They know you're not wearing it. But it, you can no recognise the movement. It knows that it's not... The, the watch is just stationary. Yeah. The, right. other, the other time, and uh, <laughs> Macca in the system there, go 911 woman stuck. The Apple Watch saved a woman who went to a 24-hour gym overnight at midnight. Mm. She got stuck upside down trying to do a chin-up <laughs> where she had lodged her legs. <laughs> couldn't get out. No one else at the gym. Yep. Couldn't couldn't move at all. Mm. Had to use her Apple Watch to call 911. Oh, that is great. It's in the system. Because I think, too, when you hit the ground like that, right, if you fall backwards, I think when you're then on the ground for could be four or five seconds, then emergency services are called. Yeah, right. This is the lady calling 911. I 
stuck in this reverse, like, back decompression thing. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> Just, Amazing. Just hooked. Just like hooked. a bat upside down. And would be there for hours. It's like the stories you hear too, where it'll come out of the States and someone will have been shot and then they've had a jacket on with their iPhone in their pocket and the bullet has hit the iPhone. Oh, my God. Because the iPhone has a Never bullet. have heard that. Haven't you? Because the iPhone has a bullet magnetic um, uh, attraction function, <laughs> says. It's an app. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so it will actually, the bullet will steer to where the iPhone wow. is and hit the iPhone instead of your body. That's God. how clever it is. I think with the it's, iPhone 14, it turns the bullet around and sends yes, it, it back to the it person does. that shot it. Then calls the cops Amazing. and the iPhone will get out of your pocket, get the guy <laughs> in a headlock, choke him out until the police Incredible arrive. Tech, right? It's just phenomenal tech. <laughs> You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Ten grand up. Fitzy and Whipper's last man standing yeah, man, 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 man. is now worth Maybe I'm a cash type. Ten K. Let's go to the carryover champ right now. We're talking Taco Tuesdays. Megan in Camden. Are you, are you thumbs up, thumbs down for Taco Tuesdays? Oh, I'm definitely thumbs up. My husband hates them, though, and he thinks the soft ones are just a glorified wrap. Oh, they the, the don't make any sense, Megan, but that's not the issue today because you're doing well. You are our reigning champ. If you can oh. hang on till Friday and win, there's $10,000 oh. in your pocket, Megan. Oh, I hope so. Good luck. You're up against Kim in Caring Bar. You've got a strategy for taco night, Kimmy. I do. I do, actually. Wanted to share it with you all. Yeah, mm-hmm. what is it? Well, what you do, so in order to ensure you have no mess, you do a flour like tortilla first. Yep. Then you put your corn hard one in the middle, stack it all up, wrap the soft one over the hard one, ensure no mess. Oh! Jeez, oh, okay. Integrate the soft with the hard shell. Who that is thought? a great idea, Timmy. And you get that great corn flavour as well. Oh, well, wow. that is really good. Well done, Kim. That is so good. Okay. You've got to try good. it. Good luck okay, today, Kim. We're going to try that one. All right. Ten grand's up for grabs. You've got to get through to Friday. Someone will win that cash. Whoever loses today gets $500 to spend at Urban Swan. It's the ultimate date night. It's ranged from food, wellness, adventure experiences. Megan, you are going first. If you get one wrong, power goes over to Kim. Whoever has the power at the end of 60 seconds goes through as the carryover champ. Megan, your 60 seconds starts... Now, a cat is said to have how many lives? Nine. Correct. Directioners are the fan base for which pop band? Uh, pass. It's One Direction, Megan. Over to Kimmy. Kimmy, in Australia, how old do you have to be to vote? 18. That is correct. In the 1999 film, what is the first rule of the fight club? Oh, pass. You don't talk about the fight club. Back to Megan. In which sport might you hear the words bogey, eagle and birdie? Golf. Yes. Tracy Grimshaw is leaving a current affair after how many years as its host? 100. No, 17. (laughs) Over to Kim. Kim, Harry Styles and Florence Pugh are starring in what upcoming film? Harry's Life. No, don't worry, darling. Back to Megan. In what year was Uber created, Megan? Um, no, 18. No, 2009. Kim, over to you. John Pemberton invented which popular soft drink? Oh, man, Kim, you've won it. But I tell you what, that was a tough round. There's really no other tough. way to put it. Degree of difficulty, 10. Oh, my Ten. gosh. Wow. So Tracy hosted a current affair for 17 years. Harry Styles, Florence Pugh are in the movie Don't Worry, Darling. Oh, my God. And John Pemberton invented Coca-Cola. Kim, you are through. Megan, well done. You've done so well over the last Hi. three days. <laughs> Thank you. you got- Sorry, Thank Megan. You. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Guys, can I talk about Tuesday nights? Um, there's something we do regularly, and I don't know who started this, but last night I messaged a mate who wanted a phone call, and I sent him a photo of what was going on. And at my place, he sent one back going, we're doing the same. This is out of control. It's Taco Tuesday. Um, tacos, I've never been a fan of, and I would suggest in my book, the most overrated offering when it comes to food. Oh my gosh, you That I've ever come across. Are you going crunchy shell or soft shell? Great point, Sarah, because I would is like just to. messy. You've got three kids, and this was my night last night. Lisa says, oh, by the way, we're having tacos for dinner. She knows I don't like tacos for the point that, one, they're so messy, and secondly, um, I don't think they taste great. So 
Then she says, I've taken the meat out of the freezer. It's in the sink. I'm heading off at 5.30. So she spends the half an hour prior to dinner upstairs getting ready before she walks out of the house. Oh, right. She's going to meet Hernandez. She was. <laughs> uh, she's going to meet Some her. Some real Mexican her, cuisine. Her true lover. Says you bring up the hard shell, right? Mm. So the hard shell is messy, right? So the hard shell was the original shell. Yeah, as kids, it just never held. Well, of course it doesn't And you would squeeze it and the whole thing well, would fall out Of course it doesn't it's, hold. It's not the original. So it's actually soft. The, the, the soft. So why is would... It? T- t- tacos are soft. I, tacos are soft, are they? Yeah. Not burritos and quesadillas. Deers were soft, but tacos were supposed to be the hard shell. So, and fajita. And fajitas. So, you go from uh, a soft mm. to the hard, right? Yeah. Both are messy. One is a wrap, really. One is a small wrap. And then, call it what you want. And then there's the hard. Both of them ooze out both ends. Yeah. So, you've got to try and reinvent, which so, they've done before. So, then, is, so, is a, so is a kebab, mate. So there's a lot like of a food. kebab is you, you smash a two kebab. kilograms of crab down here at the a fish market. Different. A so kebab is wrapped. Yeah, a kebab the foil is wrapped saves at the you. end. The foil <laughs> saves, and it's a larger wrap, so you're able to fold it in to stop it falling out the Still bottom. Still makes mess. This is a seven, a six, and a two and a half year old trying to eat tacos Too that advanced. I've had to prepare, defrost the meat, and then cut up the lettuce, the cheese, and whatever else goes in your taco. You're a hero. Then, then <laughs> they do- decide to invent the pocket, right? The pocket. The Peter. The, I don't know. The, oh, is that the half? Like, it looks oh, like a taco yes. shell, but yeah, it no, sits it, with a flat It looks like oh, a sock, Sarah. Oh. It looks like the, you're filling up a tube sock. That's the little girl on the guy's shoulders who said, why don't we do both? Why don't we do both? <laughs> so here you are. Got you've you. got a food and a product where you've had to constantly reinvent it. Why? Because it doesn't work. No, Can mate. I then also point out that the person hosting the dinner, which is me... Never sits down on Taco Tuesday. Oh, no. Because one finishes their taco, can I have another one? Well, they can't refill it. I don't have a lazy Susan in the middle of the table. So then I have to get out and I can't get the avocado off the spoon, right? And then you've got to fill the taco. No, I don't want it in that order. No, can you put the lettuce and the cheese? I want the cheese under the lettuce. No, I don't want lettuce. You don't have avocado in a taco. Well, you do in these ones. So Ted will finish his by the time I've sat down. Then I'm up again. Francesca, oh, mine's all fallen out. Well, I'll grab that. So this goes on and I'm walking around the table like a paid waiter all night. So it's I haven't even eaten. Parenting with. I haven't eaten eaten, says. <laughs> yeah. Right? So this goes on and on and on. And then, I don't know why, they've found this song called Raining Tacos. <laughs> so every time it's taco night, without my wife there to help, I've got to put up with this song, Raining Taco. It's and it's like, oh my God. Hey Siri, play Raining Tacos again. So they all dance with tacos in their hand. Food going everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Tacos are the worst idea when it comes to feeding kids. And I've had it. And the cleanup involves removing all the chairs from the table and then you on all fours with wet ones. And trying to wipe cheese off timber floor when it gets squashed, I'm not doing it anymore, mate. Lobster Wednesdays, you don't complain. Lobster Wednesdays is fine because I'm being served. Whips. Cordon Bleu. (laughs) (laughs) You need the bowl. Everyone gets a very large bowl. At the end of that, it's a fork each and each whatever's landed in the bowl. Tacos are terrible Tuesdays. Tacos are the best. No, they're not, They're messy, mate. No, they're not. Have a crack. I'm not interested. 13, 24, 10 if you agree. Taco just It's just one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. <laughs> Taco, uh, the, when the Italians went, what do we do with our leftovers? Yeah. They invented the pizza, yep. right? The pizza makes sense. But no, but wait up. You, you want to talk about the Italians and mm. pa- pasta? Yeah, that's fine. Pasta, why don't you just make spaghetti? They, they've okay, made that's, 20 yep. different types of pasta. That's a, They're changing okay. it all the time. Yeah, that's a different issue. But I'm just saying, <laughs> when you look at a pizza that was designed and created from the leftovers, what should we do? Well, I've got a bit of dough I can make. Awesome. Throw the rest of it on top and you've got yourself a oh, pizza. Good. Don't try and stuff it into something that doesn't fit and then falls out both ends. Mm. Shame on you. The Fitzy and Whippers Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.